We didn't know if they, if they had an 88 in there or not, so we just turned around and went out. This is what, this is going up in those mountains I was telling you about. You see mm -hmm. the, what we had to go through? You what, you were there walking mm -hmm. to? Mm -hmm. And then we had to wait for them to fix those roads. I can't find that picture. I'll be done. I guess maybe it was in another book. Jets there, too, that they couldn't use. ME 262? Yeah. They couldn't use. They were out of fuel. Yeah. This is, we found a lot of Hungarian soldiers like this. And what were the Hungarians doing? Well, they were, they were part of the German army. Oh, I guess they were just forced mm -hmm. them into forced labor. I can't find that. Thing on my shoes, and it what kept is, them. What is, what did you keep in your pockets? Well, that's ammunition. You had the ammunition uh, belt. <clears throat> yeah, it was an ammunition belt, and each each pocket had a, a a clip with eight rounds in it. So if you used your eight rounds, you pull another clip out and put it in. And your shoes, that's you shined them up with that gas. I used to put that gas off. stuff on it, and it made it look like it was shiny. Of course not. We put these on ourselves. These, but uh, when the war was the over, then we got a regular painter to paint them the colors of the infantry and all and all that. Well, that's about all I got on here. You wanted to take a picture of the, I think it was the airplane that caught I think it was oh. the fighter planes that caught them. Yeah, some of the guys were on pack mule. There's an MP on a, on a mule, see him? Yep. That's one of, that's one of the guys that was farmed off to the, inf to the uh, <laughs> infantry <laughs> regiments. How do you know it was him? Can you tell the silhouette? Well, no, I don't know who he was, but I could tell oh. by his hat that he was an MP. Did you um? Did you ride mules? Not me, no. Were you ever in a foxhole or in a? No. Heavy, no. Oh, in Italy, yeah. But Italy, when I was in Italy, I was in this uh, replacement depot in, in Italy, yeah. and they used to show us a movie at night. Now, anybody yeah. that was in Santa Maria is where it was. Anybody that was there will remember Bedchet Charlie. They'd start showing, everybody be sitting out there, and all of a sudden we hear this airplane coming, you know. And they nicknamed the Bed Check Charlie. They'd have to shut all the lights off, you know, and, and he'd come down, I don't know what he did, and they'd turn around and go away. But every night he'd be over there. So they nicknamed the Bed Check Charlie. When you were in Italy, did you did you come close? I mean, were you involved? No, no with the fighting. So you were still behind the lines, yeah. shuttling the replacements right, back shuttling, and forth. Just bringing replacements back and forth. How far from the line were you? Well, you get you get close enough where you hear the artillery and all going on. You go right, in the, you're in the artillery positions. So that's just yeah. just behind just, the just front behind line. The, just behind the front line. Yeah, you had this. You, you'd go into the artillery positions is where you unload the troops, and then I guess from there they fan them out to the different regiments. But you weren't ever caught in the barrage <clears throat> no. of any sort. Just the, the closest I come to it was in the, <clears throat> was with the Stukas. Yeah, no, in it, France. No, it was once in Imshine. Once in Imshine, the 88s came and come close. I was in a house, and one of the shells hit the top of the house, busted the roof off it and all. But that's the closest I've come that time. That hmm. in the, in the, in the uh, Stukas. That's the Damn. closest. Did the Stukas bomb blow next to you or close no, to hit you? The, it hit the building. It hit the building, but it happened to be a factory made of uh, cement and brick. So it blew, uh, blew holes in it, but by that time we were gone. We were all down. We were all from the top. We were going downstairs. Yeah. Get out of its way. Well, that was lucky. Yeah. Was when did you go home? In 19... September of 1945. That's when Mike... So you're home for Christmas? <clears throat> yeah. We, we come home, we were afraid that we were going to send us to the Pacific. You know, because then the war was... Then they naturally dropped the bomb and that was over. Yeah. So but that's when they troops, started... A lot of troops were... When VE Day came, a lot of troops were starting to leave to go to, to the Pacific. But I had enough points. There. Points, yeah. Yeah, see, the, the points, when Award the war was over, they, they counted up your points. You got a, I don't remember exactly, but it was like a, a, a point for each day that you were in service, two points for each day you were overseas, five points for each uh, star you had on your, on your campaign ribbon. In fact, I think it was five points for each, each ribbon you had, plus the stars. So I had quite a few points because I was in service so long. Not that I was in Europe so long. But I was in service so long, so I had all those points. I didn't have enough to fly home, though. So I was. So you were one of the first released. Well, September. Let's see. When was the war over? Well, uh, in you mean April? Yeah, uh, April. April was VE Day. 
I didn't leave till September. Yeah, well, that's a long time. Six months of yeah. occupation. Yeah. How was occupation? It was was pretty good. See, you know, during the war, when we got into Germany, during the the, the, the rulings were no fraternization. I don't know if you ever heard that. We we could not fraternize with the German civilians. Oh, really? So that was a standing order because we did. Yeah, you I know, mean, you had did. to. I mean, we did. But that was a standing courteous. order. No fraternization. Yeah. But we did anyway. Yeah. You, but did, the occupation was all right. Did you do any particular Germans or civilians you met stick out in your mind? That one girl, that Finnish girl. It, um, yeah. Is romance as far as romance is? Um, did you meet her in a romantic way or? No, no. She was. She was living in the house that I was billeted in, and uh, that's how I met her. How old was she? She was just a kid, probably my age. Oh. I was a kid myself. Well, I was about 21, 22. Did you think about courting her? Yeah, I did. I but did. you decided to come on back to the States? Well, I wanted to come back. I, w I was going to stay in service, and, uh, but my brother was wounded, and my father had a partial heart attack on account of it. You know, so my mother said, you better come home. She said, don't stay in because your father, you know, he might kill your father. So I came out. But I wanted to stay in. And so you came out and you were home for Christmas, right? You were yeah, back home with your parents. Mm -hmm. Did you all have a good Christmas? Oh, yeah, because my brother was home, too. too. So it yeah, was a big came, family reunion yeah, after the war. He came home, too, yeah. Um, I just thought, it just keeps shedding. I got did, um, get something to put that in. Do you remember getting off the boat? Oh, yeah. Where did you get off the boat? We, did the, <clears throat> we, came, in, we came in on that Lejeune. I showed you the boat. Right. It was a Navy ship. We came into New York Harbor, and the Statue of Liberty was there. You had a big sign on the Statue of Liberty that said, well done. You know? So I figured, hey, man, we get off in New York. That's close to home. I lived in, in, uh, in Newark, but my family lived in Irvington. So I said, but this is close to home. But we didn't stop. The damn thing started to go up the Hudson River. It kept on going. It went all the way up to, well, we, got, we, we went to Camp Shanks. I can't think of the name of the town where, where the darn boat stopped. So it was like being back in Europe. We had to get off the big boat, climb down, and get into a smaller boat. And they took us to, to land, you know, and then they took us to Camp Shanks. In Shanks, they, uh, they come out, they said, uh, they, you know, we were, we were, first thing they did was give us big steak dinners, you know, and all mm. that. And the, then the, the officers come in and said, now, look, I'm going to tell you something else. They're going to check you guys for illegal weapons. I said, now, you're allowed one. If you've got more than one, make sure you get rid of it until you're ready to go home. So that's what we did, you know. Did you bring back some weapons, I souvenirs? Brought back, I brought back a, a, a nine millimeter Walters pistol. A beautiful gun. Oh, what a, had a patent leather holster and all. What a beautiful weapon it was. But my oldest brother wanted it, so I. Was he know, too old to have served? He was, yeah, he, he had children in law. He was married. And so he, he was deferred from the draft? He was deferred. He was a, he was a core maker, worked in a foundry. And he got, I don't know, two or three deferments. And then they finally said, now, <clears throat> the next deferment you won't get. But if you do go in, we'll put you on a Navy foundry ship, and you'll, you'll do the same job you're doing. But they never did call because the war was over then. He got lucky. But he wanted, he wanted that pistol, so I, I had no use for it. So I, yeah, you can have it. What, do you know where it is now? One of his, one of his brother-in-laws or something still have it, you know? Well, and it was did a beautiful you, pistol. Oh. Did you bring any other souvenirs back? I, that's what I was looking for. I can't find. I got a couple of German medals, you know. And I got my own bizarre, MP bizarre. That Did I you brought. trade patches with anybody? Not military patches. No, from our own country. No. Yeah, like like when you're on your. No, I should have. You know, that would have been a nice. But who thinks of that? You know, when you're when you're young, you don't think of that. Well, my granddad had a, several different patches, so I think he must have traded. But now you know where you have to go. You you got to go to uh, Branson, Missouri. Branson has a, a place there, a veteran's place. They have every patch. I don't care what unit the, the kids are in, it's on that wall. You can find your 88 Division patch. Anything you want is in, on that wall. I went there. I found my uncle's 42nd. Mine is there. I found my brother's patch, the uh, 79th. You can find them all. They're all there. What, um, when did you get just charged from the camp? up on the Hudson River to go home. Well, no, I didn't get, I didn't get discharged. That was, a, furlough, that was a separation place okay. from, <clears throat> from Shanks. After they fed us, they, they gave us all this information about you know, not taking pistols in the country and all that. Then they transported me to Dix. And Fort Dix is where I got discharged from. And how far from Fort Dix was your home? No, about 80 miles. Did you take miles. a train or did train. you? 
I had no car. Nobody had cars in those days. And you were in your full dress, I guess. Your yeah, well, full dress, well, Eisenhower thing, you know, the short jackets and all. See, now we're young. When you're that young, you have no use for any of that. Now, if if I would have thought of it, if I would have been a little less, of, wait a minute, I won't, I won't get rid of this. I'll save it. You know, I could have saved that uniform. And you don't know it. what happened to it, though. I I think I had it dyed and used it. You know, worked in it and all. Um, but you don't think of those things. Did you, you know. were the other, just the other American civilians, did they congratulate you? And or was there I, much of that? Or? I'll tell you, they did. Uh, they, they were good to us, the civilians. There's, when I, before I went overseas, I, I, I got a furlough. I went home to, to Newark. My family lived in Newark. And I got on a bus to, to get down to the place. God wouldn't take no money. I put his hand on the thing like that. I said, no, I said, you're a soldier, you don't pay. I said, that was pretty nice. But now, when I got discharged, at the end of the war, I took a cab from, from uh, the Pennsylvania Station in Newark to Irvington, where my people lived. But he took the money, and he took the tip, too. <laughs> yeah. So, things changed. As soon as the war was over, things started to change. Yeah. Um, did, uh, what, what day did you get home? Do you remember what? I, I when, don't remember. But you exactly. had several weeks there where y'all were together as a family? Oh, yeah. Well, I took the discharge out of Dick's. I, I came home from Shanks first, yeah. <clears throat> and I just got a pass. Then I stayed home a couple of days went back to Shanks. Then I went to, then they transported me to Fort Dix, where I took the, where they gave me the discharge. Then I went home for good. I went home and I stayed home there. When did you, what about romance and girls? Did you meet any girls after the war or? Oh, that was where I met Marie. I used to work for her father. You worked for yeah. her father? That's how I met In her. Irvington or in Newark? In Newark. And, her father uh, had a business in Newark. He was a, he su it was a linen supplier, and I used to drive for him. You know, I met her there. Of course, I had another girlfriend before her. Yeah. What? When did you meet her? When did you? Maria. Yeah. Let's see. We're married. We're going to be married 54 years. Wow. So I'd say at least 55 years. We courted for almost a year. So y'all must have met in 46 or 47. 40. Yeah, 46 or 47, somewhere in there. Well, we were married in 47, so it must have been 46. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Out of the water, went under the bridge. Let me tell you. Yeah. It's, it's hard to believe. I look at these pictures, I don't remember half of what happened. Yeah. But, like I say, it's, uh, it won't be long that nobody else is going to remember it either. See, so the 100% of the people were behind us. There was none of this... Uh, burning your draft cards and this and that, you know, 100% of the people were behind the troops. Yeah. It's kind of sad that we aren't yeah, more... That's right. We're, I remember going to New York and all the theaters wouldn't take any money. You just go, you know, go ahead, go ahead in. You know, if there was room, like, you know, they let you in. People, people really got behind the service people. And yeah. It's sad the way it's, mm -hmm. it is now. Well, the whole world has changed after that war. That was everything's changed. Yeah. But we're losing all the veterans are almost gone. Man. What are we losing? Three hundred thousand a month. God Almighty. There ain't gonna be many of us left. Of course, there's a lot of kids younger than me. You know, I, I was a kid when I first went in service, but when I come out, I must have been twenty-one, twenty-two, and that. So it was kids younger than me. Some people were sixteen, and they fake their well. I did age. Too, to get in. If, if I could, if I get my discharge, my discharge on, on my date of birth is 1921. I was born 1922, but I looked at that. I forget what we were doing. I said to me, I said, hey, this is wrong. I said, I wasn't born. I said, oh, I remember, and I forged my age to get into the service. I was too young to go in service, so I forged my age to get in. But that wouldn't Man. be today. Today you forge your age to get out. <laughs> yeah. But you were, you were, um, you were raised during the Depression, and you had oh, yeah. two old, older brothers? I had uh, three older brothers. So you were the we're, youngest one? We were seven. We, no, I got a young, you were my the younger middle. brother just died. Yeah, that's And I right. got one more brother left. It was just him and I left, and he's, he lives in Florida. Yeah, and he served, too. He was in the 79th. He, he got wounded in the hedgerows. Okay, that was the one you told me about, wounded mm -hmm. in the hedgerows. Yeah. Now, my youngest brother, when I died, went in service after the war was over. Mm -hmm. They still had a draft. And, went in service, but he served in Japan, but there was no war, so yeah. he lucked out there. Um, so y'all lived through the Depression, a large, huge oh, family. Did y'all go to night, go to sleep at night hungry? No. You always had plenty of food? You know something, people talk today about people starving. I don't remember people starving in the Depression. 
you know what I think it was? Our families helped each other. Neighbors helped each other. I can remember the soup lines. There was a big church. I was brought up in Newark, New Jersey. And the, the biggest church, there was a big Catholic church, St. James. And the nuns used to put a soup line up. And I don't remember how often or what day. But the people were ashamed to go and get it. So they'd send the kids up. You know, oh. They'd send the kids up with a pot. They'd get it and bring it home. So you, would you, had you? No, my father worked. My father worked through the whole depression. He worked and he made 18 bucks a week. So pretty good living. And he, 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 he raised a family with seven kids and he bought a house. He was paying for paying the house off. At Is the house still there? Oh, yeah. My, my sister-in-law still lives in that house. Oh, I'd like to see that house. Oh, that's an old time, but it's a, it's, they don't make them like that today. It's a pretty nice house, huh? Yeah, it was a, it was a two-family house. And y'all just lived in it? Mm -hmm. So y'all kind of had, did you share a room with one of your brothers? We used to sleep, I'll tell you how it was. My, there was one room my two sisters slept in, There's one bed, right? And the, the, the boys' room, there was one double bed and one single bed. And three of us slept in one bed, and one, the oldest one slept in the single bed. Mm -hmm. But um, you want to read that book that uh, Brokoff put out? I've That's got a good it. Book. Yeah, I've got it. Now I know that uh, they, they got another book out now. It's called My War. What's his name? Just uh, oh, it's be, it's it's being re put out now. Got it's on at sixty minutes at the. You get it? <laughs> yeah. No, it No, it's. Working. Um, okay. So, what are, do you remember what these two are up here? This is the, uh, the Good Behavior Medal. Okay. Almost everybody gets that. Right, right. This is a, a longevity, a service medal. You, you had to be in service a year before Pearl Harbor to earn that one. Okay. This is the uh, European Theater of Operations. Right. That's with four uh, campaign stars on it. Yeah. And this is the Victory Medal. Okay. And this is the uh, Army of Occupation in Germany. I guess my granddad should have had it. nearly all of those except for this one. Right. And I don't know where right. they are. Well, they probably have more stars than me. Your four campaigns, do you remember what campaigns they were? Well, one is Rome Arno. I know that's the first one. He was one. in that one. Yeah, Rome Arno. Southern France. Yeah. Um, I think the Rhineland. And then Germany. I think it's, that's on my discharge, but I think that's what it is. Now your your grandfather probably have maybe he got more stars. I don't know how many campaigns he was in. I don't know how they broke it up. You know, yeah, from he was in four campaigns. Four, well, um, then he got four battles, four battle stars. Well, today is um, December twenty fifth, I believe, Sunday, and we've been trying to fix the damage to our window. Last night a big storm came through and. Water came seeping through the window and onto the carpet, and now we've discovered why, and that's what I'm about to show you. Let's see how it looks, Matthew.